keep up with all the election commotion at ibtimes.co.uk. We've come to Oxford, the city of dreaming spires. One thing is for sure after the general election, whoever becomes Prime Minister came to university here. But we're here to find out more about the Oxford, West and Abingdon seat, where Nicola Blackwood holds a slim majority after winning the seat from the Lib Dems in 2010. The latest poll from Lord Ashcroft was good news for the Tory. The survey showed that the Conservatives were eight points ahead of the Lib Dems, a 4% swing from the yellow outfit to the Blues on 2010. So what is Leila Moran, the Lib Dems candidate this time around, going to do about it? What we have done differently this time is we are running a bigger campaign, in fact, than when we won it the first time in 97. And we have worked incredibly hard over the last three years to build up that strength from within. I have a, a high expectation that we can do it this time. Fighting talk, but Moran is up against a tough opponent in the shape of Blackwood, who is considered by many to be a constituency MP. However, the Tory has said that she has not attended all the hustings ahead of the election. We've had over 22 hustings organised um, in, the, in the campaign and um, I have done over 10 hustings um, during the campaign period, one in every area of the constituency and as many as six um, in Oxford so that there are many opportunities um, for residents to come and hear all of us candidates arguing out the issues and to challenge us on the really important policy issues. It just wasn't possible to do every single hustings because um, it just seemed to be um, the fashionable thing to um, organise this particular um, election. It's no secret, Oxford West and Abingdon is a two-horse race. So where did Labour fit in? For a long time, I think people have considered that if they don't want a Conservative MP, they have to vote Liberal Democrat. Where we sit in is that it's very clear from the 2010 election and from the last five years that voting Liberal Democrat does not keep David Cameron out of 10 Downing Street. I mean, I think all evidence shows that he was very much Prime Minister with the support of the Liberal Democrat Party. So our message has been quite simply this time, actually there is another party, there is an alternative in Oxford West and Abingdon who could form the, the next government of the United Kingdom. Other parties include the National Health Action Party, who campaign against the privatisation of the health service as well as calling for more funding. But isn't this fledgling group set up in 2012 just a one-issue party? An irrelevant sideshow maybe? to the main event. The problem we have with the, the major established parties is that none of them have really done a good job with the NHS over the last few governments. They've all been seduced by the market. They've all been convinced that actually getting the private sector in will somehow help our NHS. And they've all, unfortunately, underfunded the NHS. It was a bit better under the last Labour government, and it's been disastrous under the current, well, the, the just gone coalition government. Um, but there's this idea that actually, um, if we have a market, somehow competition is going to drive up standards and drive down costs. And there's no evidence that that, that that has worked anywhere in the world. And there's quite a lot of evidence now that it's really destructive and wasteful. None of the other parties are either pledging enough money to fix the damage that's been done, or um, arguing to remove the market, which is the thing that's most destructive. Health is a big issue, nationally and of course in Oxfordshire. The county faces a so-called bed blocking crisis as patients who do not require hospital treatment take up much needed places. On top of that, March data from NHS England showed that Oxford University Hospital's NHS Trust has repeatedly failed to meet its four-hour A&E waiting targets. So what are the main candidates going to do about this issue? Well, I'm really pleased that um, I've been able to um, support the government in making sure that we increased funding every year of this parliament, over £12 um, billion pounds of increased NHS spending, even while we had to make some very difficult decisions about spending to address the problems with the deficit. Um, and that means that we have got more doctors and more nurses and so on. Um, but what we've seen in our A&E um, in, here in Oxfordshire is more than 2,500 people being seen um, uh, on a regular um, time and that has been a big challenge for the ANE and I do think that um, we are going to have to fund um, the NHS to a much higher level in the next parliament that's why 
the Conservatives have committed not just to the extra two billion which the Chancellor announced in the last autumn statement, but also the extra eight billion um, which um, Simon Stevens um, said was going to be necessary in the five year forward plan. I heard about some of these issues. I sent out a survey very, very wide to people who came back to me with their issues and it wasn't just about A&E targets, it was also about access to GPs, um, their availability for minor injuries units, you name it, they came back to us. Um, it shows us why it is so important that in the next parliament we get the balance right with the economy. We need to fund the NHS. The NHS has said that it wants £8 billion by 2020 and we are the only party that has a credible plan with how we're going to do that. We do that by bearing down the deficit, but afterwards, and this is really important, the extra money that we would be making as a country, we want to use to put back into public services. And that's a key difference locally between us and the Conservatives, who for ideological reasons want to keep cutting. We think the election is about the NHS. Um, and that matters enormously to Labour. We created the NHS. The NHS will not survive another five years with David Cameron as Prime Minister. It just won't. The first thing we said we'll do is we will repeal the Health and Social Care Act, which has just done so much damage to the health service. What we also want to do, and this is with particular reference to those ANA figures, is actually make sure we do something about bed blocking and that we do something about the actual support that people have to leave hospitals. So we've said we will fully integrate the social care with the health services, with mental health services. That makes a big difference to an awful lot of people and I think is one of the most positive things that we can do. It's a tight race. Whatever the result in Oxford West and Abingdon, the constituency is leading the way in one important area female representation. Here, as you've seen, the main parties are all putting up women. A refreshing change from our male, pale and some say stale political system.